Dr. Pal, it's a pleasure to welcome you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. For um, me. You are no less than a celebrity now. Uh, people watch your viral videos, uh, although it's it's uh, taken in the context of uh, making uh, in a comedy and funny style. But the message is very very serious. Uh, um, you know, most of us go through this. I would call it a disease of uh, overindulging into food. Uh, gluttony, if you know, uh, in the Old Testament was uh, was uh, one of the major sins. Correct. And now it is part and parcel of our lives. We cannot stay without it. So, um, um, before I go to the social media craze, I wanted to get some basics right, mm -hmm. so our people can understand some fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And especially South Asians have this huge problem of overindulging in kinds of food we eat and the kinds of food we prepare at home. And especially when it comes to events like this or weddings, mm -hmm. obviously we eat uh, twice on what we normally eat. So, some basics to cover up to understand you know the urge to need and how we should control those things correct, correct. so the biggest problem is we are being surrounded by food everywhere everywhere to a point that you know I do I promote intermittent fasting and I do an intermittent fasting video in between the ad clip is Swiggy <laughs> So people, instead of watching my video, they click the link and they order, buy one, get one free biryani. Right? That's, how, that's how wide the availability of food is. And uh, while the availability of food is increasing, the amount of physical activity is decreasing. And it is rampant in the last 10 years. And uh, if you look at the data, the risk of sudden heart attack or you know developing diabetes, obesity is directly, clearly correlated with this uh, interpretation. So what I tell my patients is that, you know, it's a very, very simple test, okay? You go home, measure your waist circumference around your belly button. If it is more than 90 centimeters in men, congratulations, you're pregnant. If, <laughs> if it is more than 80 centimeters in women, then there is a sign of obesity right there. And uh, if that is the case, you don't need that much food. You don't need that much food at all. You have to reevaluate your priorities and then see what can we do to decrease the belly fat. Uh, the other aspect which I was mentioning is uh, the kind of foods we eat. Mm. Heavy carbs, mm -hmm. uh, rich in oil. Uh, and we think that unless we eat heavy carbs, we don't feel satisfied. Correct. So the craving to feel satisfied without carbs is very difficult. Correct. And it's a lot of hard work mentally mm -hmm. to process that, you know, I can eat two pounds of chicken as a protein, but if I do not eat a little bit of rice or bread with it, then I'm not complete. Correct. So it, I, I know you're not averse to carbs, mm -hmm. but how do we then try to control so that? It's just the other way around. It is just a mental mindset. It is just a mindset change. Actually, by science, the chicken and the protein will keep you full. You don't need that much carbs to increase your, uh, decrease your satiety. Um, the, but the problem is that we have been raised in a carb ritual, right? So uh, when I, whenever I say that people complain that oh, you know, our ancestors eat, ate rice, our ancestors ate uh, rotis, and they were doing okay, but they were also doing farming, they were also doing physical activity, not here and sitting in front of the desk. Um, so as we change the lifestyle, it is okay to take carbs, I'm not against it. At the same time, you also need to include protein that will satisfy your hunger. Um. In, in terms of uh, getting the food intake, right, there are different theories. You say eat very small portions, eat multiple times in a day with e intervals. Some people say don't eat anything after 7, Correct. fast for 15 hours. Uh, so I think e each to his own but not all these things are applicable to everybody so what is correct is there a correct where all those things are kind of correct depending how you take it correct there is no one size fits all there is no one size fits all it's not the electric car tesla that guy fits everybody's requirement no it's not like that everybody is different our body is different um, so i promote intermittent fasting but doesn't mean that that is the uh, golden thing for everybody so i adopted intermittent fasting myself and i lost weight because there was only sustainable method that i could do Anything that you do, any method, two things. One, you should love it. You should like it. You should not hate it. Second, it should be sustainable. If the first rule is not applicable, the second rule will not happen. So I am not against keto. I'm not against uh, any other diet. I'm just asking you to follow and sustain whatever diet that you choose. In my case, being a busy practitioner, I work from 7 a.m. to all the way up to 10 p.m. sometimes when I'm on call. The only sustainable thing is I cannot keep on maintaining my calories and all those things. Intermittent fasting fell on my lap. 
basically oh you know i said okay i know that based on the circadian rhythm after 7 pm when the sun sets your digestive hormones goes to sleep and then you know we keep on waking them up in the middle of the night and it will keep on working for you at one point of time and then it will say enough is enough please leave me alone you take it by yourself and that is where the start of diabetes hypertension happens so i know that from a clinical research that i got involved in and then i said okay you know after 7 pm if i stop eating then probably at least i can say 50 percent of the problems so that's what i started and then the only thing i did was consistency every day every month every three months every year then until it becomes a habit so you are completely shutting out all parties because nowhere dinner is served before seven especially not indian parties so then uh, this is a challenge for for many people but then define intermittent fasting you know a lot of people have different theories about it and what worked for you i'm sure this is working for some other people as well so based on your own research on your own body and you look great by the way so you, you know so there is some work gone into it so let's understand you know what portions do you eat and uh, how frequently do you fast and how many hours etc correct so um, just a follow back up to the previous question is that you know i say sunset yes it is not practically possible uh, but if we change the mindset to 7 pm at least you will stop by 9 pm at least you'll stop by 8 30 so it is going to be a gradual progress and number one number two is all indian parties has to happen in the afternoon and if that doesn't happen, at least we have to create some alternative options in terms of, hey, you know, okay, you're going all the way up to 10 p.m., so how can I have dinner early? Some kind of conscious effort has to be happen from you, from our side. Uh, and the second thing is what I do is I, I keep it very simple. You know, I don't drink green tea. I don't drink all these like avocados and all those things. I eat everything. I eat everything. But time will be the only thing that i really focus on then once that becomes a habit then i focus on okay uh, what is the protein that i'm eating and uh, protein intake should be like 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram per day and then slowly i focus on my sleep focus on my water focus on my meditation focus on my physical activity you cannot do everything at the same time it has to be gradual it has to be progressive it has to be consistent until the brain wiring is rewired to a point that you don't have to do this by willpower Thank you. And then let's switch now to the social media power. How do you get into making these videos? So this is, I just came, it was an accident. Uh, during COVID, uh, one of the non-profit organization asked me to do an educational video on COVID. So I shot a 10 minute video, I sent it to them. They were like, this looks like a stand-up comedy. And uh, this is, doesn't look like professional. You know, we cannot do it. I said, I, I, what do I do? And he said, you know, put it in WhatsApp. So I put it in WhatsApp because of the timing, that's where COVID hit in India. They all, everybody wanted to know about COVID and this was a little bit funny. So I, because of the lighter information that the content was delivered, that became viral. And that's how my YouTube journey started. <laughs> Um, most of the followers are women, Correct. All right? and then you said that the men who follow are actually forced by women to follow you. Correct. Um, <laughs> <I have a> <laughs> so, so, so um, uh, how do you see, I mean there is obviously a, a, a very positive uh, influence through this, although like I said earlier, it looks comedic but it's, it's very important information. So this has become a, a great deal now, I mean 10 years ago we didn't have social media. So how do you see this medium as passing on the important messages? Right, you know I'm so glad that you know I'm able to reach all these people but all, there is a caveat in it. The social media is so impressive that you can be in your own bubble. Let's say you are in my intermittent fasting bubble, all you get is intermittent fasting is super good. Let's say you are in the bubble of intermittent fasting is bad, my picture will be posted like a police station picture over there in that bubble. So it is. you have to be really, really careful in terms of which bubble you are in. Okay, So uh, that amount of effort that you need to take and then stick to one principle and then just follow those bubbles. And then that will invariably get into your subconscious mind. Um, another reason that uh, my channel is reaching is when I go to all these medical comedy shows that I do, um, when I see people, they genuinely, they come and then they say, yes, I lost weight. Yes, this really worked for me. Yes, my GI problem. There is an emotional connect that gives me so much satisfaction, more than even if I save a patient who is bleeding to death on the operation table. And finally then, let's give you a plug. Uh, how do people follow you? 
those who already don't know you. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I obviously have YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, I do uh, videos, but more importantly, I want to promote this fasting concept to a global level. So I do this in English and I want to do, I'm, I'm doing medical comedy shows. So similar to a stand-up comedy, but uh, it's called Metcom. So it's a one hour show. I'm going to Malaysia next month and uh, I'm having a show in Dubai the month after. So it's picking up and I'm very impressed. I'm very excited. I think destiny has something else for you, doctor. Yes. Pretty soon you won't be a doctor anymore. <laughs> Even now they don't believe that I'm a doctor. <laughs> All right, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for coming and sharing Thank your thoughts. You so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks.